I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about the Jews under um, the municipal law of the Galician towns. Uh, the Jews uh, throughout the period that we're dealing with here controlled anywhere between 10 and 20 percent of the lands belonging to uh, the the urban guilds. They were by far the most cohesive of all of the ethnic groups of um, uh, of, of the Galician towns. And as always, it was a Polish oligarchy that courted the Jews, that used them and really brought them to elite status, and it was really only the Polish uh, aristocracy that permitted them to join the um, the urban guilds. Now, according to Talmudic law, uh, this kind of cheek-by-jowl existence with the goyim is never a good thing. Uh, the Jews were only interested in joining guilds so that they can control them and purge them of their Christian, whether Orthodox or Catholic, um, uh, content. Um, but the Jewish communities were purely Talmudic, and of course, uh, while they demanded uh, access to all of the institutions of the Goyim, they uh, strongly forbade any kind of intermarriage with the Goyim. Now, I-, I want you to understand something about the Jews. The Jews have always been hated very, very deeply in, in Ukraine and in Russia, uh, but particularly in Ukraine, even amongst liberal politicians. The Jews are seen as this uh, clannish, uh, racialist caste. And one of the reasons for this, uh, one of the historical reasons for this, is given the more or less um, independent nature, that, by the way, is a very complicated subject in and of itself, of the Galician towns, the Jews were never technically a part of the urban administration. The Jews, and they were given this right by the Polish aristocracy. They had their own administration. They had their own government. They had their own tax system. That means Jews only paid money into their own institutions and into their own Talmudic society. At the same time, Polish landlords used the Jews to collect taxes from everybody else. The Polish landlords realized that the Jews hated the non-Jews, no matter how many privileges the Jews had had been given in this era. Uh, and it's no accident that during the Kimilnitsky uprising in, in the 17th century that the Jews really were hit the hardest uh, because of this idea that they pay taxes to no one but themselves and yet were used as tax gatherers by the Polish uh, administration. Um, they had their own administrations, which were run by the synagogue, and these were uh, educational and political institutions. They even had their own courts. They had their own prisons. And the synagogue was not a place of worship. I want to make this very clear that in Polish Ukraine, the synagogue was a political uh, and, and legal center of the Jewish administration. It, it also should be noted that in this part of the world, the Polish aristocracy gave the Jews the complete monopoly over the selling of alcohol, especially if that alcohol was to be sold to Ukrainians, again, keeping the Ukrainians as ignorant and as dumb as possible. And that the, the Jewish life existed as the middlemen between the Polish oligarchy and the poverty-stricken and ignorant Ukrainian farmer uh, at, at the time. So we have to understand that the hatred of the Jews in this part of the world exists for very good reason and that the Jews were able to live out their Talmudic universe of exploiting the contemptible goyim in their world uh, and, and they did this at the behest of the Polish oligarchy and that the Polish oligarchy gained their control over the formerly independent cities by the use of their Jewish middlemen. And so whenever you had any substantial kind of Ukrainian uprising, especially from the Cossacks, um, the Jews were really the first target because they were the the um, the vanguard, so to speak, of uh, the Polish and Roman Catholic upper classes.